Hey guys, welcome to another DaVinci Resolve 17 tutorial and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to achieve super smooth slow motion inside of Resolve. It's really easy to do. Before I begin, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay notified for my next uploads. And also if you want to see some awesome behind the scenes content of projects that I'm working on, follow my social media accounts, I've got Instagram and Facebook. So the technique that we're going to be doing is frame interpolation and that's going to be using the optical flow process um, using the DaVinci Neural Engine AI artificial intelligence based process part of the software. So let's open up DaVinci Resolve and let's start editing. Okay, so I've opened up DaVinci Resolve 17 and I've just loaded in my clip that I want to use and let's just play it back. So I've got my dancer here and we've got some fairly big motion and movement. So I shot this video clip around 25 frames per second at about 50 shutter speed, which gives you um, nice natural looking motion blur. So let's um, slow this down. And we're just going to go and right click and retime controls. And um, I'm just going to change the 100%. So I'm going to change the speed to about 50%. And I'm going to play it back and as you can see the video clip is very jittery and it's not super buttery smooth like um, how a lot of nice slow motion clips are so we got to make sure that our clip is selected and we go over to our inspector window and we'll scroll all the way down to retime and scaling and this is very easy to do it just takes like two seconds so uh, let's go to retime process and let's change that to optical flow and then go down to motion estimation and we're going to go to speed warp and you've also got scaling and resize filter i'm just going to leave it as is because the main settings that we want to be adjusting is our retime process and motion estimation and doing it this way is very processor intensive so i would recommend doing this at the end of your edit um, to play it back smoothly so we can see it, I'm just going to right click and I'm just going to hit render in place and we'll come back when that's finished processing. So I'm just going to play this back and I'm just going to zoom in and it's done It's done a fairly good job, like it's fairly clean, there's no artifacting, um, it's quite smooth now. So I'm just going to quickly show you the before and after, so um, here's before. It's quite um, jittery, the motion, it's not very smooth. And then now it's nice and smooth. So what happens when you try to slow footage down that doesn't have the extra bit of frames? So if you've got 25 frames and you're trying to do half speed, so about 50 frames per second, um, it's basically duplicating frames to um, create that slow motion. And that's why you get that jittery movement. What the DaVinci Neural Engine um, optical flow process does or the speed warp process does it fills in the frames in between to give that um, fluid motion instead of that stuttering motion so um, that's basically how it works and the faster the motion you have the more um, the the optical flow process has to process your um, video clips and make it smoother so I would recommend this process on something that isn't um, fast motion. Um, if you do have something fast motion, I would recommend shooting at a higher shutter speed just because it will reduce the motion blur and that will help with optical flow and speed warping to get a better result. I, I did some testing with shutter speed and I found that the higher the shutter speed, um, the better uh, the optical flow speed warp uh, looks for the super slow motion. So I'm just gonna bring in this clip here. I shot this at 50 frames, I would recommend shooting at a higher frame rate of above like 50 frames um, to get that super smooth slow motion look just because you've got more frames and it captures more data of the motion so you're, you're able to get that nice smooth slow motion. So I shot this at 50 frames, um, I can't do a kick flip, I, I attempted it. So, um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend when you're shooting if you know you're going to be doing some super slow motion stuff and you don't have a, a camera that can shoot 200 plus frames per second and you've only got 50 frames or 60 frames depending which part of the world you're in, um, I would shoot 
at the highest frame rate that you can just to get a better result. And I'm just going to right click and I'm just going to go to retime controls and I'm going to make it about 25% speed. So that should make it about 200 frames, I believe, if my math is correct. As you can see, when I do it at 25 frames, it's quite jittery. It's not too bad. Um, the slow motion's pretty good. You've got a fair bit of data capturing. So when I go to the next frame, it's only small motions in between. So that'll help the software. And the same process as before. Let's go to optical flow and go down to speed warp. And then just so we get smoother playback, I'm just going to render it in place again. So it's finished rendering. So let's just play the clip back. And there we go. 50 frames is now turned into 200 frames. So yeah, using the retime process of optical flow, um, it's not just for super smooth slow motion. You can also use this for um, any fast motion sort of stuff. If there's any issues of dropped frames or if you have multiple frame rate issues. So if you're editing in a 25 frame uh, timeline and you've got um, 24 frames a second footage mixed in with 25 frames, uh, 30 frames, you can actually use this to help smooth it out if there's any dropped frame issues. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay notified for my next uploads. And I'll see you guys next time.